Good morning. I was asked to come today to record a testimonial on what has happened in our family during this difficult time of coronavirus. Shortly after we heard about this on TV, of course it was on every morning, uh, we became shut-ins. So my family discussed where we were going to get masks because they, people have been buying most of them and we couldn't even get any at a couple drugstores. So lucky for us, we've adopted a Korean family, Young and Misook, and they had gotten the masks and they came almost at the same time and gave us a whole bag so we could wear them. They kind of look out for us as we look after them. Living in the BWI area, my granddaughter April and her two children were living with her parents, my daughter, and my daughter enjoys having the, her grandchildren, my great-grandchildren there. Tyler, who is nine, and Owen is three. The reason why I'm mentioning that is because I'm going to tell you how they un tried to understand this complicated life they were, that was cast upon them. Three weeks ago, April told her mother she was sick to her stomach, act, uh, she ached all over, she felt warm and terrible, terrible headaches. So she went to work the next day, even though my daughter wanted her to stay home, and they sent her immediately to one of the testing uh, buildings there in the Glen Burnie area. And sure enough, in two days, we had the results. A nurse came to my daughter's house and said that April did have uh, the coronavirus. She had to go to bed and the children had to stay away from her. So they rearranged the house and bedrooms and everything. But the things that I heard when I would call there, I wanted to go up and help them, but my son-in-law said, no, I can cook, I can clean, I can take care of everybody. We don't want you to come because she has that coronavirus, and if you get that with your heart problems, that's not good. So she said, absolutely not. So she was told uh, at the clinic to t try to explain it to the children. Now, the nine-year-old sort of understood, but the little one, it was three, um, they quarantined uh, my granddaughter. So um, we, everybody there in that house started wearing a mask, and I think the little ones sort of like that. Uh, it was uh, hard for him to understand uh, why he couldn't kiss his mother goodnight. That, that broke my heart because I thought, oh, here he is, three years old, and he's faced with all of this. But eventually they kept talking to him and talking to him very patiently to uh, explain to him about germs and they would spread and all that. They went into a lot of detail. Shortly after my daughter, granddaughter, was feeling better, she took... Uh, Owen, the youngest three-year-old, uh, out. She had to pick up some things, and it was her first day driving. Well, evidently, it was their pattern to stop at McDonald's and get him a Coke. Well, McDonald's was closed, and he cried. He said to her, um, Mom, you, Mommy, you have to tell them I have to have my Coke. You have to tell them. And we all got a kick out of that because she probably had Coke at home, but it's the, the feeling that he was doing this, you know. And he's quite, quite a, a little adult, but he's in a house for all adults. So um, we sort of got a chuckle out of that. But um, when my daughter was told that she may have the coronavirus, oh, I, I just prayed and prayed and prayed, and I, I thought, oh, God, you can't take my daughter from me. I, as you all know, have lost two people, young people out of my family. 
And um, the thought of losing my daughter was really bothered me. So I just prayed a lot. I, I really did. I, I just, um, I couldn't stand the thought of that. Earl, my son-in-law, said he was keeping meals coming. He was cleaning the house, making hand uh, touching places secure and free from germs. The mask seemed to be the important item. Two weeks uh, recovery time, my granddaughter April took Owen out and uh, he finally got his Coke and he was happy. And um, the highlight of my uh, mother's day was none of the children could come. We have seven children between the two of us. And um, the Korean family came over. They didn't come in because they're still wearing their masks. But they gave me, it was Young and Misook and the children. They gave me a dozen red roses and uh, something that looked like a pizza, but it was a Korean pizza. It was made out of seafood. So um, they are so thoughtful and so wonderful to take care of. They say sometimes, she always tells me, uh, you are like my grandmother. I say, okay, I'll be your grandmother. I'd love to be. While this is all going on, Ted keeps busy with the videos here at church. So many people have told him how they, how they really love having that for, to, to look at. It really helps them. And he's been pretty busy with our yard and grass and all that. Now we've learned a new meaning of the word Zoom. We all go in, the, the whole family has a certain time, I think it's six o'clock on Sundays. And we all go into our computers and we go in on Zoom and we can have a conversation for an hour. So that's a new, new thing for our family. Um, we had two things that have had more direct impact uh, impact on us because of the virus. Everything uh, was shut down and I had been up to the Peninsula Hospital and had the test overnight, staying overnight and they watch you sleep and uh, the conclusion was I was to get a um, sleep acne, the, the CPAC to sleep better and I'd feel better, and they were hoping that would take my um, AFib away. So the hospital called about a week later after the first test, and they said, well, I said, I don't really want to come to the hospital because you have so many people there with that virus. They said, well, you have to go through the emergency room. I said, no, that's, that would be the worst place for me to go. Can't I just come up there? She said, well, they had about 25 little bedrooms, I think it was up, up on the second floor. And um, I said, can you guarantee me that no one with the virus has slept on that pillow and in that bed? She said, no, I can't guarantee you that because we've used all those beds because we're out of beds. And that was going on in the hospital. I said, look, let's just put this off. Let's put this off for a while. That's, I don't need to have it. Uh, you know, right away now. So anyway, I've, I've received a lot of phone calls. I've had been sent for blood tests, all those kinds of things. But they're going to send the machine to um, Apple Drug. And the training is online on the computer, so I can learn how to use it from there. And many thanks to everyone who called me about my grandchildren and my daughter, granddaughter. And... Um, my last thing that I th think that really maybe didn't uh, affect us the way it would have normally without being in this situation where you can't go see anyone in the hospital. Uh, it was a dear friend of mine, a former co-worker, and she, her husband uh, wrote us just a little note he could hardly write that she had passed away. Uh, and uh, we could go see her, and she, there isn't any burial until all of this is over before they're even going to bury her. 
So we couldn't visit the family because of the virus. So it can affect you in so many ways that you don't, it isn't just because someone in your family may get sick and even die with it. Um, it was not being able to go comfort our dear friends. Um, we, uh, if my friend Fran was looking down on me today, I hope she understands how much she influenced my life and Ted's through her generosity. Fran's funeral isn't going to be held for a month or so. I thank God every day for being here to pray every chance I get to, my, to save my family. I really was worried about losing more of my family. So I thank you for this invitation and I hope that, um, I hope no one has to go through this, especially faced with losing one of their children. Thank you.